Good evening. I should begin by offering you a warning. I am a social studies teacher. Yep, classroom teacher. History, and I love it. One of my favorite questions to ask students to put 16-year-olds on their toes is, why are you here? So, let me ask you, why are you here? If you are here because of a personal relationship or deep admiration for Senator Mitchell, raise your hand. This is happening. Okay. If you are here because of a commitment to Maine, a commitment to education, and a belief that all people deserve the opportunity to go as far as their talent and willingness to work will take them, raise your hand. If you are here because the food is fantastic, the venue unbeatable, and the company too good to pass up, you may now raise your hand. <laughs> well, if you're anything like my students, uh, you'll, you'll now want to turn that question on to me. Senator Mitchell, Mitchell Institute supporters, your vision and your effort are why I am here. Parts of my family have been in Maine for over 200 years. The jet fort was once part of my family's dairy farm. My other relatives worked in paper mills and shoe factories. Times change. It hasn't always been easy for us Mainers to change along with them. My grandparents and my parents did not attend college. Um, I'm very, very lucky to say that they were determined that it wouldn't pass me by. That said, there were obstacles. Frankly, the financial risk was intimidating. I cannot express now the sense of excitement I felt and my family felt when I learned that I had received this financially meaningful scholarship. Then that summer before I headed off to college, Senator Mitchell himself shook my hand, reminded me to work hard, and reassured me that I was on the right path and that he had my back. I was a Mitchell scholar, and a lot of people, you, were committed to do the things that my family could not. The Mitchell Institute network led me to internships from Augusta to Washington, D.C., even paying for my gas one summer so I could take an internship. I attended leadership retreats, developed a close personal bond with members of the staff and fellow scholars. You folks were with me every step of the way. And when I thought that I had to leave Maine to land a teaching job fresh out of school, Board member Duke Albanese drove to Bowdoin College, grabbed my resume, and got on the phone. Folks, I had a job in three weeks. I've been teaching in Oxford Hills ever since. As a young professional and college graduate, I have attended Mile 2 and grown professionally from my time on the Alumni Council. The breadth and depth of your effort and investment in me has been transformational in my life. But as I grow older, and settle into my life as a teacher. I am becoming more grateful to you, to all of you, for reasons that extend beyond myself. Reasons like Mariah Kimball and Cherith Rays and the other former students of mine. They're now scholars of yours. Now, <laughs> yeah, that. That was the part that made me cry when I practiced. <laughs> so 10 years after I opened that exciting scholarship letter and began a journey with your support, today college planning materials prepared by the Mitchell Institute hang on the walls of my classroom, and I confront the fears of first-generation college goers with the same reassurance and confidence that you gave me. So why am I here? I am here because I am a Mitchell Scholar. I am here because, as with a growing body of Scholar alumni, I am a proud financial supporter of the Mitchell Institute. I am here as a former member of the Mitchell Institute Alumni Council and a current member of the Board of Directors. I am here as a classroom teacher who lives the mission of this organization. I am here as a college graduate. I am here still a Mainer. And you're why. You're why I'm here, so thank you.
It is now my privilege to introduce our next speaker. I will keep his name a secret until the end to create a sense of suspense for you all. In 1980, he began his 15-year tenure in the United States Senate, where he would, did that give it away? <laughs> OK. Where he would serve for six years as Senate Majority Leader. He helped Ziramara Hernandez be the first in her family to go to college. He served as chairman of the peace negotiations in Northern Ireland, leading the governments and respected political parties to the historic Good Friday Peace Accord. He inspired a young veteran, Alex Cornell de Hoo, to run for and win a seat in the Maine State Legislature. He served as chairman of an international fact-finding committee on violence in the Middle East, developing a plan endorsed by the Bush administration, the European Union, and many other governments. He also connected Truck Quinn to his institute's dedicated staff, supporting him to reach career goals despite a down economy. He served as chancellor of the Queen's University of Belfast and encouraged Robin Karen to pursue her career in medicine. He served as president of the Economic Club of Washington and made another former student of mine, Zane Duff, and his parents beam with pride at the annual Scholar Brunch this past summer. He has led nations to peace, held the reins of the United States Senate, guided the Disney Corporation through a transition, even helped reverse the curse. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, Ask our next speaker what he is most proud of. And well, I suppose you already know, because that's why he's here. It is my great honor to introduce Senator George J. Mitchell, our next speaker for the evening. 